During the depression of the 1930s, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg were Jewish teenagers living on the Lower East Side. Like many other people, Ethel and Julius watched the world crumbling around them. They saw the meager possessions of impoverished families in their neighborhood thrown into the street because they couldn't pay the rent. They watched volunteers protesting the evictions, breaking into the empty apartments and moving the families back in, the stop foreclosures activists of their day. In response, Ethel and Julius joined the Communist Party. They collected funds for the Abraham Lincoln Brigade. They organized for the rights of workers and the poor and against fascism in Europe. Years later, in 1950, living in Knickerbocker Village with their two young sons, Julius and Ethel were arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit espionage. After a short trial held during the most intense period of Senator McCarthy's Red Scare and conducted with significant prosecutorial and judicial misconduct, they were convicted and sentenced to death. President Eisenhower receives over 21,000 telegrams urging clemency. Eisenhower denies clemency, and the scheduled execution is moved up from 11 p.m. to 8 p.m. so as not to desecrate the Jewish Sabbath. At Sing Sing, Ethel and Julius are permitted to spend the afternoon together, separated with the usual wire mesh. They write one final letter to their sons. Dearest sweethearts, my most precious children, only this morning it looked like we might be together after all. Now that this cannot be, I want so much for you to know all that I have come to know. Unfortunately, I may write only a few simple words. The rest of your own lives must teach you as mine has taught me. At first, of course, you will grieve bitterly for us, but you will not grieve alone. That is our consolation, and it must eventually be yours. Eventually, too, you must come to believe that life is worth living. Be comforted because even now, with the end of our life slowly approaching, we know this with a conviction that defeats the executioner. Your lives must teach you, too, that good cannot really flourish in the midst of evil, that freedom and all the things that go to make up a truly satisfying and worthwhile life must sometimes be purchased very dearly. Be comforted then that we were serene and understood with the deepest kind of understanding that civilization had not as yet progressed to the point where life did not have to be lost for the sake of life and that we were comforted in the sure knowledge that others would carry on after us. We wish we might have had the tremendous joy and gratification of living our lives out with you, your daddy with me in these last momentous hours, sends his heart and all the love that is in it for his dearest boys. Always remember, we were innocent and could not wrong our conscience. We press you close and kiss you with all our strength. Lovingly, Daddy, Mommy, Julius, Ethel. <laughs>